StarCast 5, presented by CarShield, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, Tennessee at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Loaded with stage shows including Renee Paquette's Sessions with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, Soraya, Turning the Page, The Horsemen reunite on stage for one last ride, and Bret Hart's look back at 30 years later on his SummerSlam Classic. And of course, StarCast will be capped off by Ric Flair's Last Match. Follow the story leading up to the last match over at RicFlair'sLastMatch.com. Tickets and information available at StarCast.com. Well, Saturday night was SummerSlam. This was the first post-Vince McMahon SummerSlam. And there were obviously a lot of things that went down now that he's gone. But at the end of the day, it was also a long show. And Uh, one thing that has not changed is lots of video packages, lots of entrances. It was a long show. I don't think three hours and 40 minutes is too bad. I mean, you know... The uh, AEW shows are are an hour longer. Um, I mean, you know, obviously much more great matches on an AEW show. But for SummerSlam, I mean, I ex- you know, I think for SummerSlam you expect a four hour show. So, I- yeah, but the difference the difference, Dave, is that last hour in particular. They they had a four minute and thirty five second Liv Morgan Ronda Rousey match, and they had long they had a long talking segment before that with uh, Riddle and Rollins. Then they had a four minute match. Well, they had a, they they had a, they had a, they had the brawl. Now the Riddle Rollins thing. I mean, to me, well, let me let me let me get through this first. Then we had more video packages. Then we had Kane faking the attendance. Then we had more video packages. I, then I, we had I, the I had Roman a, Reigns I had, entrance. I, I had a I had I. I you know, whatever. I mean, I know that he's one of their guys, but man, I tell you what, you know, I mean, Kane just went way too far out. I mean, I just look like, when he came out there, I mean, I know where where we were. Everybody was just groaning. It's like, oh, uh, God. But, um, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, no, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying in the sense that it's not match, match, match. So no. it drags a lot more. Yeah. The amount of matches they had and the length of the matches, this show would have been significantly better at three hours. We did Agreed. not need that extra 40 minutes of padding to get it to three hours and 40 minutes. That's well, my the, point. The, the thing, the thing is, the thing is, they're always going to do the long video packages. That's just what they do. Um, and, but yeah, that hasn't changed. Um, I mean, the pacing of the show hasn't changed. Really, I mean, when I when I watched the show, it didn't feel like. I mean, the only thing I thought that was different was, you know, that he's getting uh, Becky Lynch back as a babyface, and he's brought in Bailey and Dakota Kai, you know, who was gone, and Io Shirai, who was, you know, was going to go if she didn't get a main roster contract. So he got them, you know. They, so so he, he changed that angle, but. Everything else was, you know, what you would expect from a Vince McMahon show. You had your short matches that really didn't mean anything. You had your wonky finishes. Um, I didn't even get the Usos and, and Street Profits match. I mean, it's like, I guess if the plan is to break up the Street Profits, then it makes sense. But if not, it's just like, you know, how many times, you know, I mean, basically the exact same finish they did the month before, only this time. You know, there was no referee error. I mean, I watched that and it's go like, it was, you know, when he did the 1D and everything, I'm going like, he's got to kick out because that's the finish from last month. But they did the exact finish. So, you know, there was that. The, the Brock Lesnar match was pretty much the match that made the show. It's the match everybody wanted to see. I think it was very, very successful in being a complete gimmick. But, you know, it was dramatic and it was not seven minutes or 12 minutes or anything like that. And, you know, you, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that was, uh, kind of off in the early part. And then, uh, I, I, I'll tell you what, when that, when that match was, uh, when, they, when, uh, Jimmy and Jay Uso came out and he gave those guys those overhead suplexes, I was scared shitless. I mean, when my reaction was just like, man, they got to ban that overhead suplex on the floor after what happened to Big E because for on both of those suplexes, it looked really scary. I mean, they were very, very close. Well, to it was them. late in the match, and they were rushing, and Brock was rushing to hit these, and neither of them looked good. I mean, the second one looked worse than the first one, but they both didn't look good at all. Well, and he, he'd given Roman an overhead really belly-to-belly on the floor early. He gave him another one off the steps to the floor. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty scary, some of the bumps they were taking. But... I haven't heard of any injuries, but I guess we should open with Bianca and Becky because they did a spot about, I don't know, three, four minutes in where uh, Bianca gave her 
I guess it would be the glam slam, the jaded, whatever. Yes, and it was sure. weird because Becky landed, she didn't land flat. She landed sideways on her shoulder. Right. And I separated my shoulder twice, and both of those times was from landing on my side like that. And from that point forward, if you watch the match, Becky was grabbing her shoulder for the entire rest of the match. And I don't know that she suffered a separated shoulder, but if it came out tomorrow that she did, I would not be the least bit surprised because that's the exact landing that does it, and she was holding her shoulder the entire rest of the match. And there was no real spot where she got her shoulder worked on where she would be, like, selling it for the entire rest of the match. So I think she got hurt. But she did manage to do the whole match. They went 15 minutes. I thought it was a very good match. It was a little... There were a couple of things early that weren't smooth, but they had all sorts of spots. The crowd was super into it. Uh, Finally, at the end, uh, they were up top, and uh, Becky was going to go for the manhandle slam, but Bel Air turned into a Spanish fly, grabbed her, hit the KOD, pinned her in the middle of the ring, clean pin, Crowd went nuts. She redeemed herself for from last year's SummerSlam. And then the big angle afterwards was Becky walks up to her and offers a handshake. And Belair looks at her. She's not sure, but she shakes her hand. They hug. And then Becky goes to leave. And before Bianca can leave, first Bailey's music hits. And she comes down the ramp, gets a big ovation. Then Dakota Kai's music hits. She comes down. And finally, Io Shirai, who they're now calling Io Sky, which appears to be her new name, yeah, she came name. out, and the three of them stood there in the aisle, and they were about to get into the ring and go after Bianca when Becky showed up and backed up Bianca. So it does look like they're putting the stable together of Bailey, Kai, and Io Sky. And Becky Lynch is back to being a babyface. Thank God. Yeah, they might And well. uh, that, good that reshuffling good. of a lot of things in the women's division. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see who becomes odd person out or if they just add new people because that's adding uh, three new people on the raw side. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll see how that all plays out. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was the whole Becky Lynch's uh, heel thing was... Uh, you know, I mean, she was fighting from for a year now. She's been fighting the crowd, so you might as well do it this way. So that was a that was a positive, and Yoshirai on the main roster is a positive, and you know Bailey, obviously, you know she's been ready for a little while, and uh, it's good for her to be back. So, um, yeah, that was that was good. I thought the match, I thought the match was good. I didn't think it was as good as their WrestleMania match. But um, but it was, uh, it was a good match for sure, yeah. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work. Working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.